All right, for our next presentation, we have Millennium, uh, pioneering custody solutions in the peer-to-peer -peer lending industry. Let's welcome Millennium today. Good afternoon. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, we know your time is uh, important, so we want to be uh, as brief as we can and cover a topic that uh, we think is really important to this space and this group. So, as mentioned, I'm TJ Valenzuela, the uh, Regional Director of the West Coast, and my colleague Meg Zwick is the uh, Director of Fund Custody Services for our Fund Custody Group. Millennium was established in 2000 as a primarily alternative asset custodian. Uh, we handled self-directed IRAs, we handled uh, taxable accounts. We, are, we were primarily established as an alternative asset custodian and we've become a much more diverse custodial services business uh, specializing in peer-to-peer -peer industry, private fund custody, uh, facilitation of transactions and alternatives which range from uh, trust deeds, real estate, uh, traditional limited partnerships, LLCs. We've been in business since 2000. We're headquartered in Chicago. We have about 300,000 accounts today, uh, which represents about $10 billion in assets. Um, the most important thing I think that we want to leave with you today is that uh, we're a rapidly growing firm. Uh, the peer-to-peer -peer space has been really important to us, and that if you're a fund, if you're an advisor, if you're an individual client, um, or a platform, and you'd like some access uh, in the peer-to-peer -peer space, we believe that we're the ones that can help you provide that. So how is Millennium supporting the peer-to-peer -peer custody or the peer-to-peer -peer lending platform business? We're partnering with major platforms in order to support their core business functions, which include providing custody services directly for the platform, controlling some of their cash flow in terms of dual control over client monies. We're also uh, serving as a referral source for institutional clients that are coming to these platforms and creating a fund or want to manage separately managed accounts and have to meet the requirements of the custody rule. This includes holding loans and cash for funds or separately managed accounts, as I mentioned, uh, special purpose vehicles, but also supporting leverage arran arrangements where we're acting as a confirmation agent to a, a leverage partner in order to grow the assets of a, a pooled investment vehicle. And of course, uh, we can always support an individual investor's self-directed IRA and allow them to invest in peer-to-peer -peer loans directly through their IRA. I, I think it's important to note as well that in these categories on the lending platforms, the registered investment advisors and the individual investors, that you're probably well aware of the largest lending platforms and we exist there today in some form or fashion. Um, we probably would leave out their names. It should be okay to leave out their names, but you probably know who they are. Um, and the registered investment advisors who've started funds to, to invest in the platform, we're probably working with the top 10 funds out there right now uh, between the various platforms. So today we've talked to platforms that uh, are newly formed and ready to, to go about their business, but are really unsure about what our custodial relationship with them should be. So we have these uh, quick conversations. Tell us about your structure. Tell us about your, your wants and needs. And uh, we kind of come to this tailor-made solution for every uh, scenario that's been out there. And I think our expertise has shown through in that, in that regard. So just a quick illustration of the different types of structures or entities that we can support, as I mentioned, separately managed accounts and funds, um, trusts, IRAs, and the platforms themselves. So we get asked uh, a lot, what is a qualified custodian? And, and that's actually what the rule requires, is that uh, a registered investment advisor use a qualified custodian. Um, what, did, what do they do? They hold cash and assets on behalf of clients. Um, the rule says that these different types of financial entities can serve as a qualified custodian, trust company, bank, saving association, and so forth. But just like alternatives, not every entity has expertise in alternatives or in the peer-to-peer -peer lending space. And of course, we'd encourage you to work with someone that has that expertise. I think that the natural analogy for us is that in the alternative space, we typically get asked, um, why, does, why is Millennium able to do it and then my traditional group not able to do it? And I think this extension on the qualified custodian is the same. 
Um, these entities can do it, however, they lack the expertise to do it and therefore kind of focus on their core business, which is not alternatives or private assets or even in the peer-to-peer the -peer space. I think one of the most common or most often questions we get asked is, why do I need you? And uh, one of the answers is that there was a genesis for a need for a qualified custodian, you know, relating back to a situation in the late 2000s where a certain group provided uh, service, all aspects of servicing client accounts, including um, custody, administration, trading as a settlement agent and administrator, and created a, a bad situation for investors. And so Rule 2064-2, was created and you know there were our requirements designed to enhance the safety of client assets including um, safeguards which are the use of a qualified custodian such as Millennium Trust providing account statements independently of an investment advisor or manager uh, directly to the clients and then also um, annual surprise exams uh, the bottom line is that the rules objective was to reassure the client and provide increased protection for investors. I think, you know, the main point is, is that, um, you know, not every, not one firm should be doing all things. And the more you can segment out those services, uh, the better off it's going to be in the end game. I think as custodian, because we have a, 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 a responsibility for cash and the assets, that it's very difficult to move them outside of uh, what we're doing on a normal basis for you. So if somebody called us and said do something that's atypical for what the fund is set up to do, we would be a gatekeeper of sorts to say um, that wasn't contemplated in the beginning, so it's very you're going to have to prove to us um, why it needs to be done and why it needs to be done today. And I think that was lacking prior to a certain person who had a historic situation in the U.S. Uh, economy. So the custody rule applies to registered investment advisors and fund managers. Uh, in our experience, what we found over the last uh, four, four to five years is that many uh, RIA firms don't understand the rule or think they're in compliance with the rule and then go through an audit or an exam and find that they're out of compliance, that they actually do have control over client assets or that they didn't arrange for a surprise exam or so forth. And um, we've found situations where they are given you know, a certain, a very short time frame to comply with the rule and uh, Millennium's been able to help them um, be, get within compliance. So I would say that if, if you're unsure or unfamiliar with the rule, definitely uh, speak to an attorney or your, your tax advisor or a compliance manager to get a better understanding of where you are with, within that, um, underneath those requirements. So just an illustration um, to show where a qualified custodian such as Millennium would fit. So on the one side, we have the registered investment advisor that needs to comply with the rule. They want to provide transparency to their investors in order to attract more money and really be able to focus more on what they want to do, which is manage money. And on the other side, we have an investor that's looking for more transparency and reassurance that their assets are there. Millennium fits that niche right in between those two by providing statements and so forth um, and allowing the investor to benefit from having a qualified custodian that's settling their trades and holding their assets and confirming them back to them via a statement. Um, not only does this um, allow the RIA to comply with the custody rule, but it also allows them to have uh, that transparency to the client that is so desirable. So uh, why use an independent qualified custodian? I think up to this point we've been really talking about the regulatory requirements for specific scenarios that are related to um, you know, the qualified custody rule. Uh, what we found in practice and experience is that whether you're, um, you know, you can, when you're a fund and you're starting out, you can probably have a, a certain amount of capital that comes in because people know you really well um, and want to help and want to be a part of your, your uh, solution. And what we found is, is that some of those people have gone uh, and experience some, some growth uh, difficulties. And I think it relates, in our perspective, to not having a service provider like a qualified custodian underneath. So the first thing that a big institutional investor does is they come in and they ask you about your service providers. And I think ultimately you get down to the custodian and, and the question becomes, 
you're handling cash and you're handling uh, transactions, who's managing the portfolio? And because of this, I think a lot of funds who initially said, we don't really need your service, uh, have come back to us and said, now we see really the value of, of using a qualified custodian because you're helping us uh, with this administrative aspect that uh, frees us up to manage the portfolio, to choose our loans, uh, to move money, to go out and, and raise more capital. And all the while, we're not touching anything except giving you direction to move the money between the platforms and our accounts uh, you know, with you. So I, I think that to us, qualified custody really is a, is a friend to growth for these funds. If you, if you, if you want to be $100 million, or you know, the rule is going to get you at $150 million, but if you want to be in that range and start growing rapidly, you, you typically will need a service provider like Millennium to help you. So the custody services that Millennium can pr provide specifically for uh, consumer lending platforms and RIAs, um, in standalone, or as TJ said, or in conjunction with a service provider, you know, includes holding assets, <coughs> loans or notes for the benefit of clients, whether that client is a fund or a separately managed account, um, accepting monies and then funding your platform account, which allows you to pick, as TJ said, pick your loans and make investments, and, that, and so forth. We also will provide fund level statements to your investors, which is one of the ways to meet the requirements of the rule. But then more importantly, given the electronic nature of these notes, Millennium has pioneered a solution in order to um, ascertain custody of these electronic notes. So typically in the alternative world, there's, it's been very paper oriented and there's been assignments of assets and subscription documents. And obviously the peer-to-peer -peer lending industry kind of blew that whole scenario out of the water. And we've worked with all of the major platforms in order to pioneer an electronic custody solution. I think also, you know, fund level statements, I'm not sure if, I, I think maybe we should talk about that a little bit because, um, you know, any LP in these funds is going to get a fund statement representing all the activity in aggregate for the fund on a quarterly basis. So basically any, uh, any money coming in, any money going out, uh, we kind of uh, cover up the, the secret sauce so we're not giving away uh, your investment choices. But what we're really trying to show is uh, you bring in a million dollars, a million dollars was put to work in this, in this scenario or in this scenario, in this scenario. Um, and the first round of statements that go out, inevitably the clients will call us and say, my investment is only for $300,000. Why did I get a statement representing $50 million? And we say, you know, this is, a, this is something that you can see. You're going to get another statement from most likely the fund administrator that shows your specific representation in the fund, but our responsibility is to show you what's going on in the fund in aggregate. One thing that we want to make clear is that Millennium isn't taking the place of any of the service providers that you may be working with currently, such as attorneys, a fund administrator, accountants, auditors. Uh, we work specifically with all of these service providers in order to help resolve client issues, but also to grow your business. And I think the most important thing for us in this slide is that we're a custodian. We're not these service providers. We're not an auditor. We're not a leverage provider. We're not a bank. Uh, we're definitely not attorneys, um, and we work in concert with the administrators, the accountants, and all the other groups that the funds already have in place um, to shore up and bring you a nice uh, consolidated package of services so that you can run your business and expand and grow. So why you want Millennium Trust? Uh, I think we talked about it. Uh, I don't need to know. Um, we have uh, expertise in this business, and I think we really have pioneered quite a few solutions for quite a few firms uh, looking to gain traction in the space. Um, you know, I think the biggest thing that we've done is we've created models, whether you're a fund, whether you're a, a platform, whether you're an individual client or an advisor, we've created separate teams that will handle you individually. Now, if you're a, a, a unique scenario where um, all of those uh, different groups are combined into one, each team has the expertise to help you with all those different scenarios individually. So we have one of the things we talked about today is we have yet to lose a client um, in this business, and the business grew from last year, from January 1st to November 1st, a billion dollars for us. So we think that we know what we're doing, and I think the numbers back that up for us. So uh, we have a white paper that we've created. Uh, my colleagues have a white paper and a peer-to-peer -peer case study. 
Um, I invite you to read them. They're, they're very well done. They talk about the white papers on alternatives in general. The peer-to-peer -peer case study is about, uh, obviously, peer-to-peer -peer and the role that custodians play in the growth of the space itself. So um, there's only one or two of them, so I invite you to get them quickly. Um, but if you have any questions, I think we have about 50 seconds, so you can uh, feel free to ask. Otherwise, come visit us at uh, booth 35, I think it says. And uh, we're back in the corner around the uh, side. And uh, yes? The question was, are we looking at doing anything overseas? And uh, we have been in discussions on the subject for the better part of about 12 months. Um, I think one of the difficulties for us is the answers we'd like to. Uh, the difficulties is, is that identifying individual clients like our CIP here in the United States is a little more difficult to run on foreign nationals essentially trying to bring money on shore. So we're trying to solve for that. And I think we're talking to a, a law firm on that subject. But uh, when that happens, I'm not sure. But it's something we really like to do. And I, I think if you asked me offline and I wasn't in front of everybody, I'd say yes. <laughs> <laughs> but because I'm up here, I'm going to hedge and say, you know, we're probably not there yet. Thank so. you so much. Thank you.